guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 205, would you believe? So, yep, for those people who don't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. So we did 100 weeks of mass making. We rerun them for another 100 weeks. We did a 10 week kind of, um, you know, things that we hadn't made before. And now we're doing another 100 weeks of the mass making sessions. And yep, these are the, oh, let me see. Me rephrase this. Uh, these are a great way to build up your stash very quickly and easily um, so that you've got plenty of things ready to fill your junk journals with. So, you know, it would be absolutely fantastic if you join along. We have a lot of fun here on a Tuesday. So, what are you going to need? Today, we are going to be making library pockets. Um, so, yep, library pockets. And what would you need if you want to make them? So, I have bought along digitals and I say this type of thing every week if, you know, if I've bought along digitals. I've bought along digitals because that's what I predominantly have these days. If you don't have digitals or you don't want to use digitals, you do not have to. I would recommend using paper that's slightly thicker. So my digitals here, these are 230 GSM. Now I've tried to print these borderless on my printer, but it's just chopped off the last, um, you know, half an inch or whatever. Um, some of the pages, for some reason, my printer's really been misbehaving, so I've got like a smudgy edge. But that's fine. It's not going to affect what we're making. Um, so 230 GSM is my thickness of my paper. I would not make these library pockets from copy paper. Um, you could possibly experiment with other sort of thicknesses. I mean, I quite often use kind of a presentation type thickness. I'll just show you. So this, which is 110 GSM, you could possibly play around with making them with something like this if you're quite confident that you're not going to tear your pockets. I personally am pretty, you know, clumsy and rubbish, so I would probably tear my pockets. So, I, you know, that's why I opt to make them from something thicker. Um, another thing that would be perfect to make them from is like scrapbook paper that obviously tends, to, you know, quite often to be thicker anyway. So I'm sure that, you know, that would be fine. Um, you could obviously make them from book page, you could make them from sheet music, things like that. But again, I would recommend something slightly thicker. So not a very flimsy book page or very flimsy um, sheet music. But if you've got some that's thicker, that would be perfect. So you're going to need paper. Uh, you're going to need some glue. Now, I always use the Anita's Tacky Glue when I'm gluing paper items. So that's what I've got here. I've got mine tipped upside down. It's now pouring out all over the desk, but because I don't want to have any blockages or anything while we're filming. So, yep, please excuse my messy glue. I've got a glue spreader. Mine is just an old sort of card. You know, you can use anything similar. Um, I like to have a dry wet wipe on hand just to, you know, smoosh out any excess glue. I like to use scissors, but again, you could use a paper trimmer um, if you prefer. So my go-to is scissors, but use whichever you prefer, you know, paper trimmer or whatever. Um, and again, I'm going to probably use my handles for my scissors to, you know, make my scores. If you would prefer to use a bone folder, of course, use that. I do not measure. I'm going to judge by eye. So, you know, again, if you like to measure, then, you know, have on hand the things that you require to measure and cut um you know that makes crafting easy for you and the only other things that you might like to have are things like a corner punch um for you know if you just want to have like rounded corners and things but again these are optional extras so the actual basics are just the glue the paper the you know the scissors and um however you know scissors or however you like to cut your paper um, so I think that's pretty much it. Obviously, if you want to have things at the end to be able to decorate with, I've got some distress ink here. Whoops, distress ink here. Um, mine is the walnut stain. I try tend to switch between walnut stain and vintage photo, just depending on what I've got to hand. And then I've got a variety of things. I've got some lace, I've got some, you know, some bling and things like that. So just use, you know, whatever bits that you like to decorate. I tend to only decorate one and then I leave the rest, you know, to decorate at a later date. So how do we make these pockets? So let's move this, this paper out of the way. So I'm just going to bring in a couple of sheets. Now, in fact, I'm going to just use the one sheet for the first one, just to kind of demonstrate how these are made. So I'm going to take my sheet and then I'm just going to cut what's going to be my pocket base. And you will see kind of what I'm talking about as we get going here. So I'm just going to trim this straight up. 
the sort of rough width that I want it. To be honest, I think I've done that way, way, way too wide. I don't know just quite how big I think I'm going to be needing this. But anyway, so hence why, you know, possibly you might be better off measuring. Um, but, you know, like I say, just craft how you need to craft. So if I were measuring, this is approximately four inches wide. It may still be that this is, you know, this is quite a wide pocket. So perhaps, you know, perhaps three and a half inches might be kind of better. So I'm just going to trim that up. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to have a wraparound pocket, you know, kind of around the bottom section of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take my paper. In this instance, I'm going to use, you know, coordinating paper. And this is from my um, new Roses collection papers. So I'm going to take that and then position it where you want it. And again, you can have these as tall as you like. Obviously, if I were to leave it like this, it would be the full height of the page. Personally, I, you know, I wouldn't leave it that tall. But again, you know, play around and kind of get some different looks, perhaps. So if I take it in here. So I'm just going to trim my paper down. And another little tip here for trimming your paper. If you don't have a paper trimmer or you don't want to use a paper trimmer. What I like to do, try and ensure a straightish edge. You watch, this will just go very, very wonky. I cut it down. Uh, I fold it down, sorry, squish it in. And then I cut as close to that folded edge as I possibly can. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be, you know, dead 100% straight, but it's going to be pretty close. Because, of course, you know, you've used that folded straight edge. So then I've got my pocket to go round here. Okay. Now, at this point, as you can see, I've got this hanging down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of position this where I want it. So as you can see, it's much too wide. And then I'm going to just fold this in on the edges like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is judge how much I want hanging out at the top. So, for example, you know, I might like it this height. So I'm going to just sort of take here. And what I want to do is fold this up here like this. This again is just giving me my guide for where to cut this pocket. This bit doesn't have to be dead straight if I'm truthful because it's not going to show. Again, you could keep this bit to make something else later. But, you know, of course you don't have to. So that's going to be my base pocket. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. That was just my mum and dad. So, yes, what we've done, we've cut this off. Now, I don't know whether you can see this very clearly on the camera, so I'll bring it up to the camera. What I've done here is there's a gap, kind of, I don't know, half an inch or something like that. And that's where I'm going to fold my paper up. Okay, so this is what's making the... Um, I don't know what you'd describe it, but yeah, the what's wrapping around the pocket. So I'm going to cut this edge like that, okay? So that's going to glue there. I'm going to cut this edge here. That's going to glue there. And then that bottom part, again, just going to keep this bit for if I'd like to do something later with that. So this bottom part here, move this up. And then I'm just going to, oops, fold this up here like that okay so again just squish that down like like that okay and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take it all out and then here again you probably can't really see brilliantly but where I've got my fold marks here I'm going to sort of mitre the edges now when I say sort of I like to go in straight across like a proper mitered bit and then off to a slight angle at the other edge, okay? And then these here, the top pieces, if I remember, this is just good practice if I remember, I try and also mitre those, just so that when they're wrapping round, they're not really going to show. Sometimes they can show. That's something that I do if I remember. It's kind of a good practice, you know, but it's not essential. But if you do remember, you know, it's quite a good nifty thing to do. So that's my pocket there. Okay, so all I'm going to do then is glue down my, oh no, 
would you believe I've had my glue pouring out all over my desk and now now look I've come to use it and it stopped working <laughs> what's going on with that oh my goodness hang on a second sorry about this <gasps> oh my gosh come on right come on come on right there we go that's better so woo, glue this down like that okay so smoosh that in like that like that and then this one here whoops like that oh what have i done with my wipe there we go for a minute i thought well that's weird i know i had it here because i showed you guys right there we go and then we just press all of our edges in like that and then you've got a beautiful beautiful pocket it's pretty roomy like that okay so my glue is probably going to take a couple of seconds to glue now i don't want to obviously hold everything up by holding this down so i'm just going to take a couple of bulldog clips to just hold this in place and again you know you don't really have to do this if you're holding your pieces down you know it will just kind of press down but i just don't want you all sitting bored while i wait for the glue so that's all there is to that okay so i'll talk you through one more and then to be honest i probably don't need to talk to any talk you through any more because you know they're not the most difficult pockets or anything um so let me take something that hopefully might complement this paper quite nicely so we could have could have something like this yeah should we do that so so again i'm just going to do that folding trick to get a sort of vaguely straight edge so i'm just going to fold this down so this paper here this is from my isabella kit and all these papers are obviously they're all available on my etsy shop okay so we just cut this one down i don't know what's going on with my printer to be honest it's smudgy on the edges and chopped off the edges which is pretty annoying but anyway i don't know what that's about so again we said about three and a half didn't we so i'm just kind of taking it to about three and a half but you know i mean it doesn't have to be exact like that no good for your nails obviously so probably would not recommend <laughs> just pressing it with your nails like i just have but anyway I mean, my nails are shockingly terrible anyway, so I doubt that I'm really causing them much further damage. They look awful anyway. Um, and then you've got your front piece and you're going to just obviously wrap that around. So again, I'm going to take this round here and I'm just going to take it round like that. Okay, and then this side, oops, like this. I mean, these are just the ways that I find easiest to make these. Obviously, you know, I've probably seen or perhaps you guys have seen other people make them in slightly different ways so you know just really go with the method that suits you best okay and then again take this up to the sort of height that you want it to be so maybe here okay so i'm just going to trim this down here again made a horrible horrible job of cutting that but it doesn't matter this is the bottom piece of the pocket that nobody is going to obviously see i'm going to just trim this edge off like that and then i'm just going to trim the bottom just like that okay throw that this way maybe keep this for making something else i mean oh honestly as if i really need to keep scraps it's ridiculous but we do don't we we do keep them right so that's my pocket fold your bottom piece up like that okay squish that in like that okie dokie and then here we're just going to trim that down just because there was a lot of bulk on there and then just my to my corners okay and then just here remember you know like i say this is just good practice but not essential but 
I just think it helps because occasionally, you know, you might have it where you can see where it's tucked round. So it's just sort of something good to get in the habit of doing. But like I say, I don't always remember to do that. And then again, we're going to just put this in place. Oops, sorry, it's got glue picked up on there. And then we're just going to take take our glue. Oh, sorry, this is my paper clip that I'm unclogging the glue with. I'm so sorry, I'm very shaky this morning and I don't know what that's about, but oh, so sorry, it's probably a bit distracting. Just some days, and I know I've said this before, you know, I've, I've always been the same, so hopefully I don't think it's getting any worse, but yeah, just some days a little bit shaky. So today is just one of those days, I'm afraid. So again, press this down like that. Okay, and then turn it over. Oops, not got that very straight in there. So I'll just, oops, straighten that up a bit. So obviously, you know, depending how straight it was, that was because my, um, you know, my bottom piece is not particularly straight. So something I guess to just be a little bit aware of is you may end up with a wonky pocket if your your inner piece is particularly wonky, but. I still haven't made a very good job of this, but anyway, that's fine. And then again, this is probably glued down now, so I'll just take my bulldog clips from here and then just transfer them onto my my latest pocket. Okay, like that. Okay. Okay, like that. In fact, I'll just do that one like that. Okay, and that's all there is to them. So at this point, like I say, if you wanted to, just as a sort of different look and you know different things to kind of do, you could round your corners. So I'll just demonstrate that like that. Oops. You know just to kind of get some different looks going really again not essential you could put a thumb hole in here with one of your circle punches or something you know lots of different things that you can do to alter the look of these they don't have to all look you know identical but they're quite a nice pocket aren't they so from here we're just going to do some mass making and with the mass making i tend to assembly line style these so by that i'm meaning i'm going to cut all of my base pieces you know the back sections and then all of the fronts do all of the folding and all of the gluing um because that's a really nice way to be quick and efficient and you know achieve a lot and get a lot kind of made so i'm just going to pick some some suitable papers that we're going to be using okay oops and then we shall get cutting these down so and I will try and remember to mention the papers that I use as I use them because, um, you know, I know that you guys like to, you know, like to know the papers that I'm using. So, right. I'm probably being way over ambitious thinking I'm going to actually get anywhere near this amount done. But hey, let's, you know, let's start with um, high hopes and good intentions, shall we? And then, you know, if we have to kind of downgrade and not make quite so many, then so be it. So... Right, let's go with that. And just quickly, before I get making, actually, I'm in the middle of um, creating a Valentine's collection of papers. I've been working on it for a couple of weeks. Well, it's nearly finished, so hopefully it will be in my shop in the next couple of days. Um, but these are just one or two of the pages I thought that I would just quick... Oh, not that one, obviously. Um, I thought I'd just quickly show you now. So this should be in my shop in the next couple of days. Um, it's not obviously quite finished. I've got a few little tweaks that I need to just do to, to finish it off. But yeah, if you're looking for anything Valentine's, then hopefully it will be there in a, the next couple of days. And I've tried to do it where there's a lot of other papers that wouldn't necessarily just, you know, only be suitable for Valentine's. So you're going to get lots of obviously different uses for it. Um, so these actually I've printed onto thicker card by accident. So I might as well make one of these, you know, with one of these as well, to be honest. So, um, yeah. Right. Okay. 
enough chit chat. So I'm just going to get folding. I'm going to just fold all of them down to make my my back bases, if that makes sense. So we'll just do all of that and then all the cutting and do it like that. So we can just relax now and have a nice time. So this is from my Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. Um, and like I say, that's from the new Valentine's kit, not yet in my shop, but hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, and this is from the Bluebird. And I think it's Bluebird and Blossoms kit. Um, and this is, I think it's the, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name. Meandering Meadow or something like that. I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name of this. But also when I'm looking, this is pretty smudgy everywhere. So I obviously need to clean my printer. I think so I'm gonna have to yeah just trim off the oh well actually I'll trim it all together but yeah just need to be a bit aware of that's a little bit kind of damaged you know as in everywhere is a bit smudged um so yeah this is from the butterflies collection papers so I hope everybody's week has started out well um, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I film these videos on a Monday to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So, yeah, I hope that you guys have, you know, had a good start to your week. So these plainer ones, these are from my lace collection. This is the pale lace in the pinks. I've got the pale lace um, there. I think that's from the pinks as well. The rich lace in the purples and then the pale lace in the blues and greens. But I may use these like as the you know, the pocket pot. So I'm just going to put those kind of in my lap for a moment. Um, this is from my perfume collection in the pale, the pale perfume, um, the light perfume collection papers. So yeah, let's go and use one of those. Um, yeah, so anyway, my week's just started out. It's okay. It's, it's a bit of a nothing day, to be honest. I mean, you know, which is probably better. It's, it's not freezing it's well it's actually surprisingly i'm not saying warm but very mild for this time of year um again this is the butterfly collection papers it's um yeah it's quite mild it's not raining it's just gray it's just a literally just dull gray boring day to be honest but hey i mean it could be worse it could be chucking down with rain and things so i'll take this because it's it's better than rain and things there we go. This is from my large birdhouse collection um, or large birdhouse um, set of papers. So, yeah, I'm going to use one of these. You get the large birdhouses, but you get, I think it's like eight background pages. I think eight. Um, but they're gorgeous, gorgeous pages. Very, very pretty and girly. So. I'm probably being a bit over ambitious thinking I'm going to actually make all of these, but we'll see how we get on so i want to say a massive massive thank you to everybody who placed an order in my um etsy restock you know following my etsy restock video on sunday um thank you so so much honestly i can't tell you how much i appreciate your support and you know i mean obviously it's so nice because it really does take a long time to you know to make everything to put into your sh shop you know anyone who's got a shop you'll know just how long it takes to actually make everything then to list it, to photograph it, you know, to put things in and then, of course, to pack it and post it and, you know, all of those things. So to actually kind of like have, you know, a, a lot of people be really pleased and, you know, make or place an order is so lovely. So thank you so much because it really does make it all, you know, worthwhile, um, you know, because like I say, it is very time consuming and, you know, it's really disheartening, obviously, if you put things in and then, you know, nobody really <laughs> likes what you've put in so yeah thank you so so much I really really appreciate it so I'm just going to cut all my bases down um so Natalie will be posting out the orders later on this week she comes to me um either a Thursday or a Friday um but yeah later in the week she does her other job um you know earlier on in the week so yep she'll be coming to pack up the posting so, yeah, thank you so much to everybody who placed any orders there. And thank you so much to anyone who's placed any orders on my Etsy shop for digitals as well. Um, again, you know, 
I just really do appreciate it and um you know obviously without you guys I wouldn't be able to be here doing this so it's yeah really kind of um life-changing that you know that I can actually be doing this um and it's all thanks to all of you so thank you so much okay so last week I think I talked about going to see the color purple um at the cinema so yeah I did go and see that I think I did go on I think I did go on the Monday when I was talking about it in the mass making video um yeah so went with my son and my daughter and um we really enjoyed it it was a musical which I didn't realize I don't think that the original is a musical although to be fair I've never seen the original so I could be talking rubbish it maybe is a musical and I just wasn't aware of that um anyway we really enjoyed it I have to say I saw um a friend of mine's mum who I often bump into her at the cinema and you know we always compare notes of you know all oh, what have you seen lately that's good and and things and you know as I was leaving bumped into her and I said oh we so enjoyed that you know it was great wasn't it now she said she didn't enjoy it very much she said, oh, I thought it was like half an hour too long. So, yeah, she said the original was much, much better. And she said, obviously, the book was better still. So, you know, obviously, I can't comment because, like I said last week, I haven't seen the original. Um, but we, you know, we did quite like the, you know, the remake. So, yeah, we enjoyed it. And then um, my son and I also went to see, uh, I think it's called One Life. Um, and again, I'm sure I did talk about this last week. It's with Anthony Hopkins and it's about, oh my goodness, I'm so terrible with names. I'm trying to remember the chap's name now. Oh gosh, what was his name? <gasps> Do you know, I've got a complete blank. Anyway, he was um, responsible for saving a lot of the Jews um, in the war Oh, gosh, I wish I could remember his name. I'm so sorry. That's really going to obviously irritate me now. Um, I feel like his name might have been Will, but I don't think that sounds quite right. Anyway, um, yes, he saved um, a lot of the the Jewish children who were in, I think it was in Prague, um, and they'd been obviously, you know, put into you know, or yeah, uh, they were, well, they hadn't been put into camps, but they were only kind of a matter of, you know, time before they would have been sent to camps. And, um, yeah, he sent them all off here to the UK and they were kind of sent with like foster families, um, who were obviously, you know, going to be responsible for them and things. And he saved, I think he was responsible for saving, um, I think it was 689 children or something like that so anyway that was a brilliant film and we went to see that because my friend's mum she said oh I tell you what I have seen she said the best film I've seen recently and it was that um so yeah we said oh let's go and see that then so um yeah we went to watch it oh it was brilliant the trailer had not looked all that great and um you know we'd kind of undenied and said oh I'm not sure you know um Anyway, the film was brilliant. So, yeah, really, really, really good. One Chance, it was called. So, yeah, if you're wondering about that, we would highly recommend that film. Right, this is also from the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. So I'm just going to kind of line these bits up and fold them around. So, like that, okay. And then we'll trim them up and we'll glue them down in a moment. But we'll just kind of do all of our folding here. So, yeah, that was a really good film. Um, and then this week, there seem to be a few films coming out. <laughs> Again, I now can't remember the name of any of them. I don't know what's going on with me today. What with the shaky hands and the absolute brain fog. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just oh, I can't remember anything. I'm so sorry. No useful information being given out in this video. Yes, I do apologise. Um, this also is from the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. And I'm just wondering, should I mix it with perhaps some of this, you know, from the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2? So, yeah, perhaps I'll do that. 
so yeah perhaps we'll take it round here um yeah i'm so sorry i can't remember the name of the two films but one of the films it's by the same person who did kingsman so kingsman was probably bought out oh gosh well, quite a long time ago probably actually now maybe six years ago or something quite a while ago anyway and um we absolutely loved it i have to say really 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 good film um so this is done by the same person who did kingsman it looks very good um it's going to be filmed in that same obviously well i'm assuming that same sort of weird quirky way that kingsman was filmed so yeah we're going to be going to watch that but it seems like the like the hero i think in this one is a woman which yay who doesn't love a woman hero so yeah hopefully it's going to be um really good so this is my pale lace and i'm going to mix it here with the the bluebirds um paper so i'm just going to cut this down to a sort of size that's you know workable and then i can obviously take it from there so yeah i'll just do this okay so yeah we're going to go and watch that this week um i think that is a 12 so yeah we'll probably go with my daughter to watch that and then there was another one which again i cannot remember the name of it was something oh, oh i don't know anyway but i also saw a trailer for this week the bob marley um film kind of like about his life i don't know when that comes out but i would definitely be you know wanting to go and see that because um you know i love bob marley kind of music so and i don't know anything about his life to be honest um so yeah i would definitely you know like to go and watch that i think so yeah that will be one to watch but like i say i don't know when that's coming out it's certainly it doesn't appear to be out yet so we shall see when that comes out but definitely will be watching it um trying to think really what else don't think i've watched anything else of note nothing on the tv nothing nothing at the cinema i've been you know actually just really quite busy working and yeah obviously making a lot of things for the the restock that i did so you know lots of time has just been spent doing things like that so i'm just going to see whether any of these might kind of complement each other or i mean to be honest we could just do like a couple of um you know coordinating pockets so let's do that i'm wondering i'm going to go down to the bottom and cut here hopefully i've managed to cut this okay yeah yeah um yeah so anyway that's kind of it really just been just working and um yeah nothing else exciting at all going on in my life so yeah my daughter had um they call it tt rock stars it's like a sort of they've got these characters for the times tables i mean you know it's probably a, a good idea to help children sort of engage with learning their times tables and they call it tt rock stars so she had a dressing up day on friday at school like a non-uniform day but a dressing up day they had to dress up as a tt rock star um so yeah you know a a rock star and obviously i tried to help her you know, pick an outfit she was having none of it just like no mum no you don't know what you know what i'm trying to go for you, you don't know what they look like you know i mean as if we just haven't lived at all yeah so anyway she was having none of it so she picked her own kind of outfit she ended up looking okay you know at first i just thought oh my goodness she looks nothing like a rock star what's she doing but actually she pulled it off and she yeah she looked pretty good in the end but isn't it awful as a mum you have to really really rein it in don't you from <laughs> jumping in you know when you're just watching your child kind of get an outfit out and you're like no why are you wearing that that, you know that's not what they would have worn at all oh i had to yeah had to just bite my tongue and be like well hey if she wants to wear that 
you know. But I always remember my son, so my middle son, oh, he won't appreciate me telling this story at all, but hey, he doesn't watch my channel, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, he had this, um, they were learning about bugs and insects and they had a dressing up day. You had to go as a bug. So he kept on that he wanted to go as a butterfly. And I kept saying to him, you know, you sure you want to go as a butterfly because you might feel uncomfortable when you get to school, you know, kind of being a boy going as a butterfly and you might wish that you'd gone as something else. No, no, I want to go as a butterfly. And, you know, you couldn't tell him he wasn't listening to me at all. So we got his outfit already, picked his outfit. Now, I mean, I am no great shakes at making any sort of costume. So, I mean, you know, I'm not saying his outfit really looked like a butterfly, but again, the wings that we made, I think we made them from like a wire or a couple of wire coat hangers and things. And I covered them with like mesh type fabric. And I think we put glitter and stuff on them. But he wanted to make them really flamboyant and really kind of glittery and things. And again, I tried to rein it back in and say, are you sure? Because, you know, you might feel silly. Anyway, so we went for a bit of a toned down wing, you know, which was a good thing. But... The eyes, luckily, I had these weird, like, um, like a skiing type mask. I mean, not that we've ever been skiing, so I don't know why I have one. But anyway, I happened to have this weird skiing mask thing. And um, I said to him, oh, why don't you wear that? Because weirdly, it looked a bit fly-like, you know. It looked a bit like a sort of fly-ish type face, you know. So I said, oh, wear that, you know. So he did. And... Um, you know, that luckily just kind of made it look quite fly-like. Anyway, it got to the day and of course he couldn't wait to go to school in his costume and he loved it and all the rest of it until it got to getting to the school gate. Oh my goodness. He was suddenly crying and going mad at me. Mum, why have you made me wear this? You know, like, are you kidding me? We've actually been rowing, like, over you not wearing this. I kept saying you will not want to be wearing this and you would not listen. I mean, he was very young at the time. I don't know, five, six, very young. But I can still remember it now and we all still laugh about it now. And so if ever my daughter, you know, when she's not listening to me, sometimes, you know, I'll say to my son, do you remember, you know, do you remember the fly costume? You know, the, the butterfly and the fly costume. Because I just said to him, just go in and tell everyone you're a fly, you know. Anyway, so he does remember that. And he always says to her, oh, you know, seriously, I can remember mum trying to advise me and I wouldn't listen. And then I got to the school, I was crying, you know. I mean, not that she's done anything like that. You know, she is genuinely happy with the outfit that she chose. But yeah, isn't it frustrating as a mum? Because you're like, oh my goodness, why won't you listen to my advice? Because, you know, you've kind of, you have seen it all before, haven't you? And you've seen them getting upset then, thinking, oh gosh, why did I wear this? Why didn't you tell me? What, you know, oh, why? Why didn't you advise me that I wouldn't be liking this outfit? You know. Anyway, she she did quite like her outfit and um, it was all fine. But yeah, it just made me laugh because... Uh, I thought, oh my goodness, her outfit looks awful. You know, to begin with. I mean, like I say, she did manage to pull it, pull it off in the end and pull it all together. But yeah, at first I just thought, oh, why is she putting that combo together? It just looks awful. And I said to her, wear, you know, wear some junky jewellery, um, you know, so that you look rock starry. You know, she wouldn't have it. But she kept saying, no, I don't want to wear any of that stuff. You know, no, people don't wear that. I said to her, oh, seriously, Google some you know, images of like Cher or like Madonna in the 80s and things. Oh, she wouldn't do it. She, you know. <laughs> but like I say, I mean, actually on the Friday, she did actually look pretty good. And I was like, oh, she she does look good. You know, she, she did know best. But yeah, it's just awful, I think, as a parent. I know I've said this before, but oh, you really, really have to curb it, don't you? It's a bit like I've started giving her pocket money and um, she gets three pounds a week and she has to empty the dishwasher. So she's being a really good girl, actually. And she is, you know, she is doing the dishwasher and she's, you know, she's loving, obviously, having some money of her own. And, um, you know, it's really, really good, isn't it? 
So at first, um, she's only been doing this since uh, since Christmas, I think. Now, unfortunately, this is quite blurry where it's gone through the printer, but I think it's still going to work okay. So I'm going to go with this. Um, yeah, anyway, she's been doing it since Christmas. And um, honestly, I'm having to stop myself because I went into um, a shop here that we have called Superdrug. And yeah, it must have been like, well, it must have been in January, I guess. And I happen to see that they've started doing like a sort of budget range and you can get loads of these makeup palettes for like three pounds. So you can get like eyeshadows, three pounds, like an eyeshadow palette, three pounds, a lipstick palette for three pounds, you know, all these different things. And they've got loads of choice of colours and, you know, and my daughter, I know that I have said before, she loves, loves, loves makeup. I mean, she, she says she would like to be a makeup artist and, you know, she absolutely loves it. And she's, you know, she'll think nothing of redoing her makeup like four times in an evening because she's watching obviously YouTube and she's like picking up all these different looks and then she can't wait to try them out. So, yeah, she's kind of... Um, just constantly, constantly experimenting with different looks and things. So anyway, when she obviously started getting her pocket money, I said to her, oh, you know, they've got these makeup palettes in Superdrug and, you know, they're three pounds. You could get like, you know, every week nearly, you could buy yourself a different makeup palette. No, no, I don't want to do that. So last week when we went to the cinema... Honestly, I sound so mean now, but yeah, we went to the cinema. Now, I've talked before, my daughter doesn't really like going to the cinema, which is such a shame because both my boys love the cinema and, you know, I love the cinema and, yeah, we kind of went to the cinema all the time when they were young. Just seeing which of these I'd like to have with this. Uh, we went to the cinema all the time when they were young and because she doesn't really like it particularly, you know, we don't really go so much or certainly not when she's with us. We tend to go like when she's maybe with her dad. And um, yeah, anyway, so when we were going to see The Colour Purple, I'd showed her the trailer and obviously it looked really good. So, you know, she said, oh, yeah, I don't mind coming, you know. She was happy to come to the cinema, but she said, oh, on the way, can we stop at Tesco's and I get some sweets? So I said, yeah, that's fine. So, of course, she took in her pocket money, which is, you know, that's great because that's what her pocket money is for, isn't it? Yep, that's what her pocket money's for. And, of course, in my brain, I do know that. No, in reality, <laughs> I clearly do not know that. Oh, my goodness. I had to stop myself because we went into Tesco's and I was buying, like, a sandwich for my dinner and... Um, she said oh I've bought my pocket money with me and she had two weeks worth of pocket money she said I bought my pocket money with me I, I'm going to go and get some sweets like for the cinema and do you know what I said yeah you guessed it I said oh don't waste all your money on on sweets you know what a waste I mean hello that's the purpose of her having pocket money isn't it so she can buy what she chooses to buy with her money I don't have to get involved. I'm not buying the sweets. It's her money. She can do whatever she likes. But what was I doing? I was trying to stop her buying the sweets. Or, you know, certainly restrict how many sweets she bought. I mean, you know, aside from a watch your teeth and watch your, your health and sugar intake and all the rest of it. But yeah, I was like, oh, why are you wasting all your money on sweets? You know, I don't give you pocket money for sweets. And I said about it to my sister. And like my sister said, well, I mean, so what? You know, at the end of the day you know she's doing the empty in the dishwasher she's earning that money and if she wants to buy sweets with that that's her choice isn't it of course it's her choice and of course that's right isn't it and you know that's why that's why she's having the pocket money is so she can make that choice and you know buy the sweets and not having me say no no you know i'm not buying you any more sweets you've had enough you know i can't afford all those sweets <sighs> but that mum part of you is like no, don't waste all your money on sweets. It's so hard, isn't it? I mean, the same as like when they're doing, a, you know, the colouring in the colouring books. I mean, you know, she doesn't really like colouring in that much. She likes, um, you know, she likes the sketchbook and to sort of draw her own stuff. Um, but, you know, kind of like obviously before, you know, when she, she liked colouring in sort of more. Oh, my goodness. How hard is that? 
to then not take over when you see them going over the lines. Yeah. What is that about? You know, kind of like you're not, you know, no, no, you're going over the lines. You're going over the lines. I mean, really, does it matter? They're children. Of course, they're going over the lines. You know, that's part of the fun of being a child, isn't it? You know, but as a mum, you're like, oh, no, that's going to look shocking. You know, you've gone all over the lines there. Yeah, it's very, very hard, I think. I mean, a bit the same as kind of, you know, what do they want for their birthday or anything like that? And it's like, oh, no, well, wouldn't you prefer, wouldn't you prefer this? No, they wouldn't prefer that. They'd prefer what they've selected, wouldn't they? Oh, it's very, very hard not to be an interferer. <laughs> very hard. Let me know below, you know, do share. Are you an interferer or is it just me? Am I the only mean mean mum out there or do we have some others honestly i do really struggle i find it very hard to um sorry i'm just deciding yeah probably about there. um yeah i do find it very hard to just you know keep quiet and just let her let her choose let her make her own mistakes and i'm not even saying they're mistakes she genuinely wanted to spend her money on sweets she did not find that a mistake she loved it so, yeah, but, oh my goodness, it is, it is hard, 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 hard to, you know, not interfere. Oh, I find it hard anyway, so, yeah. Okay. So, you know, like I say, the corner cutting, you know, this sort of top corner, that's just a, an optional thing, you know. And like I said before, I sometimes remember and sometimes don't, if I'm truthful. So, oops. Dokey. Okay. believe we're in February already I mean you know just thinking about that Valentine's kit and thinking you know can you believe it we are February already I mean what on earth it only seemed the other day it was just Christmas and here we are the whole of January has gone and we're now already in February I mean what on earth it's just crazy isn't it how fast time flies just absolutely whizzes absolutely whizzes Right, just deciding where I'd like this. So I think probably about there. Okie dokie. So I'm just, you know, trimming all of my bits down and then I'll obviously glue them all together. Unfortunately, I cannot see my, uh, you know, the clock thing on the phone at all. So I have no clue how long we've been filming for at all. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, should we have this taller pocket? Or oh, it's a bit too tall, really. So yeah, I think we'll have to go back right here. Okay. Sorry about that pinging it's just a uh, message coming through Oops. and like i say this whole trimming down on the side i mean that's just really to lessen the bulk it's oops, it's not essential or anything like that but it's yeah just cutting down on all the bulk really so like that okay right last one so we've got that gorgeous valentine's paper here so i'm thinking have these this couple showing so yeah come down there I think so I'm just going to cut the you know the wrap around section of the pocket like that. okay 
There we go. Oops. And just tuck that in like that. So I was speaking to um, my friends on Saturday um, from the gym. So they are, funny enough, they were some friends of Gary's. Um, so my dear friend Gary, who, you know, passed away last year, and um, he introduced us. And this is his, you know, what was his kind of best friend from school and his lovely wife. So, yeah, they go to the gym on a Saturday. They only go on a Saturday. Well, they go during the week, but they go in the evenings. I go in the morning so yeah I just see them on a Saturday and we go for a coffee after the gym and that's how I met them was you know I used to go for a coffee with with Gary and um you know he introduced us and anyway they are building a house in Thailand well they've they I think they've really they've built it they're just doing like little bits and pieces to it I mean they've pretty much it's finished um but yeah <laughs> wow I mean it sounds amazing out there. I mean, I was lucky enough to go to Thailand um, for my honeymoon, which was obviously like, wow, 25 years ago. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm divorced since then, but um, yeah. So long, long time since I went. I did not go to the same part where their house is or anything like that. We went to one of the islands, um, you know, so I don't, I don't know really how similar it would be to where we went. Um, but I mean, obviously it was stunningly, stunningly beautiful when we went. And yeah, like I say, they have built, you know, built a house out there now because um, she is from Thailand. So her family still lives there and things. And um, so, yeah, they are planning on eventually they will move out there. So they were telling us about Thailand and my son also came to the gym. I don't know whether I said this before, but yeah, he's he started coming to the gym in the mornings and going straight straight to work from the gym which I mean of course that's a big effort isn't it to get up really early and go to the gym but you know I kept saying to him it's it's just the getting out of bed I mean to be honest as soon as you're out of bed you're no longer thinking oh I can't be bothered to get out of bed it's just literally that split second between your alarm going off and your foot hitting the floor you know once your foot's on the floor it's done you you're up then aren't you so anyway, he is loving, loving going to the gym in the morning so much. He said it's such a life changing thing because his day seems so long. I mean, unfortunately, you know, he works quite a distance. So, you know, it kind of really encroaches on his day, you know, the traveling and things. So actually going to the gym first thing in the morning is, yeah, it's been just like life changing for him. And, you know, it really does set you up, I think, for the day. And, you know, I mean, I, I am no fitness person or anything like that. I mean, I hate working out. But I do love, you know, reaping the benefits kind of mentally and, you know, things like that. And obviously, you know, I've been going through lights and stuff. And to be honest, I think I would have really struggled to get through it all without going to the gym. You know, I would say that that's kind of... Oh, I forgot to put my trim my little sides down look um I would say that that's really kind of helped to get me through you know the last three years is going to the gym because it just keeps you so strong and focused and um yeah it really kind of gives you like a well I mean it sets you up for the day it gives you routine it you know everything it's yeah and you know luckily I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of lovely people at the gym and things you know I mean I didn't really kind of like have many friends as such because I'd been married for a long time and so you know we had some joint friends and things but you know I had one or two friends but that was kind of it and obviously my friends who I had they tended to be married so it's not like they would be you know going out and I mean actually most of the people I've met at the gym are also <laughs> are also married but you know they're they're married but perhaps I'm not saying a bit more sociable, but, you know, they're sort of, um, they've got their own interests as well. Whereas perhaps some of my other friends, you know, they would just um, do things together as a couple. So, you know, opportunities to actually socialise now as a single person, perhaps, you know, weren't so much there. Um, so, yeah, I've really benefited, you know, from going to the gym from a, you know, from a meeting people point of view as well, which has been, you know, amazing. But yeah, so my son started going as well and um, 
can't even remember now where I was going with that conversation. Oh, yes. So anyway, he came on Saturday. So, I mean, look, he's even coming on his day off now, you know, getting up early in the morning and coming on his day off. I mean, I go a bit later on a Saturday. I go kind of at six in the week. And sorry, I keep having to unclog my glue, which is very frustrating. Uh, I go at six during the week, but I go at seven on a Saturday. Um, and so do, you know, a few a few others who I, you know, who I know and I've met down there. Um, and then we go for a coffee, which is just over the road to the gym. Um, so, yeah, we go for a coffee at like eight o'clock, you know, for an hour. And yeah, it's really, really nice. So I really look forward to that every weekend. And my son, who obviously then came to the gym with me on Saturday, he then came for coffee as well. So he was also hearing about, you know, how amazing Thailand is. And, you know, I mean, it's obviously it's so cheap compared to here you know, to live. And um, I mean, yeah, please do not quote me on any of these figures because like I've already ascertained, I have a memory like a sieve. So I could well be misquoting things. But um, I mean, we get bin collections like every other week. So we get like a recycling collection one week and then we get a, you know, rubbish collection the next week, you know, with our, our household waste. Um, now... <laughs> We pay something over in the UK called council tax. It is very, very expensive. So, yeah, it's a lot of money. Um, you know, it goes in bandings of your house and things. And, yeah, it's it's a huge amount of money. And um, he said that over in Thailand, they get two, two weekly collections. So twice a week, their bins are collected. Twice a week. Where ours are collected like every other week because once once is recycling, once is rubbish. Um, you know, so there is a weekly collection, but not of rubbish, if you see what I mean. Um, anyway, so, I mean, our council tax, you know, it's kind of in the region of nearly £300 a month, um, you know, for a sort of family, family home. And their bin collection... He said they pay, now this is the bit I'm saying, please don't quote me on this in case I get this wrong because I'm, you know, I'm terrible for remembering the exact figures. I'm sure he said something in the region of 30p a week. 30p? 30p a week. Now, I don't think really you can buy anything here for 30p anymore, to be honest. I mean, I'm trying to think the last time that I saw anything for 30p. Like you couldn't get a packet of crisps for 30p you couldn't get you know sweets for 30p i can't think of anything anything at all that you could get for 30p you can't get a postage stamp for 30p you can't buy anything for 30p i don't think really um again share in the comments if you can think of something for 30p share it in the comments um but yeah their bin collection is 30p per week Oh my goodness. And that's for twice weekly bin collections. I mean, that is literally incredible, isn't it? So yeah, my son and I came back from the gym and we were just like, well, I mean, that's where we need to go, isn't it? That's where we need to move to is Thailand. And I said to him, well, you know, I mean, I could work from there, to be honest, because, you know, I could just work from anywhere. So, you know, I, I could potentially just work from Thailand, you know. I mean, it might be more tricky getting my supplies, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure that you can get delivery and things like that from Amazon still and, you know, all the rest of it. I mean, maybe it wouldn't be quite so quick. I don't know. But yeah. So if you are listening or watching from Thailand, massive hello to you. I'd love, love you to say hi in the in the chat below. So, um, yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know whether I've got any listeners from that side of the world um but yeah if if you are you know or if if you yeah if you are in that part of the world then yeah say hi because i would love to hear from you there we go right now i cannot see my clock unfortunately to know how long we've been filming for but it feels like we've possibly been filming for quite a while so I'm going to finish these ones off in a moment. Let's just count how many we've got here. So we've got four to finish gluing. We've done one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, five, six, 
seven, eight. So we've done 12. And I'm going to decorate this one up because this is a Valentine's themed pocket. So I'm thinking, you know, Valentine's Day obviously is going to be in a couple of weeks. So if I don't do this now, it's not obviously going to be, you know, it won't be kind of like suitable for other times of the year. So I'm just going to ink it up a little bit. But yeah, anyway, so um, yeah, Thailand, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, we went to an island called Koh Samui. Um, now, my geography is not great. So yeah, I'm probably sounding really, well, just really like, <laughs> not very, not very up on my geography knowledge. But oh my goodness, it's gorgeous out in Thailand, I have to say. So um, yeah, very, very, very lovely. Uh, I don't know really where they are. They're, I don't know whether it would be classed as the mainland. I, I don't know. But um, they're kind of what you would class as like rural, rural Thailand. I think like, you know, a beach and things is like a couple of hours from where their house is. So they're not kind of on the coast or anything like that. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, it looks amazing, you know, where they live and definitely... You know, we came back thinking we are definitely, definitely living in the wrong place. So, yeah. And of course, they have lovely weather, you know, every day. So that's just an added bonus. Isn't it? Let's let's be honest, an added bonus. Right. So we've got that now. Just wondering what to put with this or whether, whether I could just take something from the the paper and pop it onto here or actually I wonder whether I could use one of the perfume bottles I'm not sure whether I've got any that's quite nice isn't it this is from some of the perfume background papers and this is just a little cluster that I made um recently but that would look pretty nice on there wouldn't it and to be honest we could just have it you know hanging off at the side like that that's quite nice should we do that now, do we want it hanging off at this side or this side? My automatic thing was this side, but actually I kind of prefer this more interesting shape. So I'm just going to ink that up. Okay, let's just glue this down. Come on, oh gosh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, and I watched a nature program yesterday. It was like, I think it was a David Attenborough type program. I couldn't even tell you what it was called, I'm afraid. But yeah, it was on the BBC. And um, oh my goodness. I mean, I know obviously it's nature, you know. And yeah, I need to kind of like be a bit, <laughs> a bit more clued up about, you know, the wild um, world and things. But it was about killer whales and... Um, it showed this thing and I can't remember what they called it but it was how they kind of like source their food or how they get their food and by food I'm meaning like when they eat the seals who are like on the ice um not icebergs but you know the floating ice kind of thing oh my goodness it was so horrible because obviously those seals they look so cute and Honestly, because since I've had Bo, and I know I talk about her all the time, my little dog, I can't bear seeing any cute animal. You know, like, as soon as I see anything cute, I think, oh, it's it's Bo, because it just reminds me of Bo. So these little seals, there were three of them on this ice, and the killer whales, they kind of go in, um, well, like in threes, say, and they go underneath the ice and they do this thing with their tails where they kind of whack their tails together and it creates like a massive wave that creates or causes the ice to crack and then the seals, you know, fall off. And sometimes they might have to go under a few times and it will crack in one place and all the seals will scoot over onto one bit of ice and then gradually they'll do it a few times and then the seals are under a smaller and put smaller piece of ice until they obviously drop off into the sea and then course then the whales can eat them oh my goodness it was just awful and then they showed one so the seal had kind of dropped off you know into the sea 
and then was swimming for its life with the killer whale like behind it chasing oh my goodness it was so horrifying to watch and I was just like glued glued to the telly like well glued but not wanting to watch at the same time you know that kind of like glued to it but through your you know hands over your eyes kind of oh my goodness come on come on swim away swim away that particular one did manage to get away so I was like really thrilled later there was one that wasn't so lucky but I mean obviously you know, as you realize that the killer whales do have to eat and of course that's just how nature is isn't it but oh honestly it was just shocking to watch because these seals are so cute and yeah it was oh traumatic traumatic I had to just share that with you because it had entered my head a few times since watching it it was so so shocking to watch right okay so yep I've just popped on just a bit of lace and some um, bling up there and then just one of these clusters here oh that's annoying actually because I had bought along some of my little ribbon embellishments and actually I had these red ones which I thought oh I could have used those you know, especially being this lovely Valentine's kit because they just feel very Valentine's paper. They feel very Valentine-y, but I mean, we could have one at the top, I guess. Yeah, should we put one at the top? I mean, it's a bit, bit weird probably, but, but hey, it does look pretty, so yeah. So, I mean, I personally think that pocket, you know, although it has been made with, you know, what's going to be effectively in my Valentine's collection papers, I think personally, you know, that's suitable for any, you know, any time. It's not only Valentine-y. It's, you know, it's quite, quite suitable for any time. So, yeah, what do you guys think? I think it looks, you know, looks quite good. And like I say, lots of the papers are going to have roses and things like that without any, you know, people and things or words saying love or anything like that. So they will be very suitable for, you know, for all sorts of things. So, yeah, that's your pocket. And then basically, if I just grab a journal card from behind me, oh, she says now, oh, I can't now see any. Oh, my goodness, what's going on with all my stuff? Right, OK. So obviously I'm not saying this because, of course, it doesn't really go. But, yeah, you'd have a journal card in the pocket and then you could glue around on three sides and that would be, you know, a side loading pocket as well. So you'd have your journal card there and then you'd have a pocket in the side as well. So just lovely pockets, aren't they? And like I say, they're, um, you know, they're just like library pockets. So if that were a journal page, for example, you know, that's how that would look, you know, on a journal page. So just absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? So, yeah, I hope that you like them. I hope you have fun if you decide to make some. And like I say, if you are looking for any Valentiny papers or, you know, um, you know, very romantic kind of papers or, you know, red and, you know, beautiful kind of red roses and things, um, they should be in my shop in the next couple of days. I want to say a massive thank you again to everyone who placed an order. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoy it if you decide to make some of these gorgeous library pockets. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Thanks then. Bye.